In geometry, we learned about something called symmetry. You may have uh, reflected points over the x-axis or the y-axis or the origin. In Algebra 2, we talked about symmetry again, probably in reference to, you know, parabolas. When we studied parabolas, one of the things we talked about was that there was this line that goes down the center of the parabola and it divides the parabola in half, and it was called an axis of symmetry. We said that the graph of y equals x squared was symmetric about the y-axis. That means if you fold this graph over like it's on a sheet of paper and you fold the crease along the y-axis, the one side of the graph will lie on top of the other side. When we work with symmetry, sometimes we want to know if another function is symmetric or not so it'll help us graph whatever we're trying to graph. So for example, when we studied parabolas last year, we probably had you graph one side of the parabola, for example. If we knew that the graph was symmetric about the y-axis, then for the graph of y equals x squared, I know that um, if I plug in 0 for x, y is 0, if I plug in 1 for x, y is 1. But if I plug in 2 for x, y was 4. When we know symmetry, I know that there must be a point on the other side of the y-axis in the same location. And that's how we could draw our graph. So the first type of symmetry we're going to talk about is symmetry with respect to the origin. All right, everybody knows where the origin is. So a common graph that we worked with in Algebra 2 was the graph of y equals x cubed. That was a graph that was symmetric with respect to the origin. But I'm going to show you algebraically how you can determine if an equation is symmetric with respect to the origin or not. So in the graph of y equals x cubed, uh, we know if we plug in 0 for x, y is 0. If you plug in 1 for x, the output is 1. So 1, 1 is an ordered pair on that graph. Well, what happens if you plug in negative 1 for x? Well, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So the output would be negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1 is also a point on the graph. I'm not going to show this, but if you plugged in 2 for x, so we'll make a little table here, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. If we plug in 2 for x, 2 to the third power is 8. But if I plug in negative 2 for x, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. When graphs are symmetric with respect to the origin. Any ordered pair that lies on the graph, its opposite also lies on the graph. So 1, 1 is on the graph, so is negative 1, negative 1. 2, 8 is on the graph, so is negative 2, negative 8. So we're going to say that a graph is symmetric with respect to the origin if any ordered pair lies on the graph and so does its opposite. Remember that when we're talking in generalizations, this doesn't say negative a, negative b. It says the opposite of a and the opposite of b. So keep that in the back of your head for a few moments. Okay, so let's do an example and figure out how we determine if a function has symmetry with respect to the origin. So we want to determine if the graph of f of x equals x to the 6th plus 9x is symmetric with respect to the origin. First, I'm going to show you algebraically how this works. Since we said that if a, b is on the graph, so must negative a, negative b, or opposite a, opposite b, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in um, let's see, the book uses uh, A's and B's. I'm ex actually going to call it X's and Y's. 
So, in this equation, I'm going to replace y with negative y, and I'm going to replace x with negative x. If this function is symmetric with respect to the origin, when I simplify this, I am going to get the exact same equation I started with. In, which, in other words, it's going to simplify to x to the 6 plus 9x. So the first question is, what happens when you raise a negative number to an even power? Anytime you raise a negative number to an even power, the output will be even. So negative x when you raise it to the 6th is really just positive x to the 6th. What's 9 times negative x? It's negative 9x. The last thing that I'm going to do is, since the left-hand side says negative y, I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. And I'm left with y equals negative x to the 6th plus 9x. Is that the same equation that I started with? The answer is no. It's not, respect, it's not symmetric with respect to the origin. Now let me show you graphically. Here's the graph, and a lot of times things are going to be res uh, symmetric with respect to the origin if they have some sort of cubic shape like we learned last year, kind of like that. If you can't look at the graph and see that it's not symmetric, by the way, it would be, see, see there's some ordered pair over here? There would have to be some ordered pair over here that lies on the graph in order for it to be symmetric with respect to the origin. But if that doesn't help, let's also look at the table. Remember how I said if AB is on the graph, so must opposite A, opposite B. So if negative 1, negative 8 is an ordered pair on the graph, if it's symmetric with respect to the origin, positive 1, positive 8 should also be on the graph. That is not positive 1, positive 8. Hence the reason it is not symmetric with respect to the origin. Let's try this again. So I want to determine if f of x equals uh, 1 over 5x minus x to the 19th is symmetric with respect to the origin. In order for it to be symmetric with respect to the origin, if x, y is on the graph, opposite x, opposite y must also be on the graph. So I'm going to replace x with negative x and y with negative y. Now I'm going to simplify. So, let's see, that should be negative x. 1 over 5 times negative x. This is negative 5x. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative. Please remember, this is the same as this is the same as this. A lot of times students forget those three fractions are actually equivalent. All right, let me get rid of those. I know you see the double negatives. You cannot change them to a positive because you have to raise negative x to the 19th before you can do with it, deal with that negative. So earlier I said, what happens when you raise a negative to an even power? It results in a positive number. When you raise a negative to an odd power, and 19 is an odd number, it remains negative. Now you can tell me that those two negatives make a positive. And then I have to get rid of the negative 1 in front of the y, and you can either divide or multiply everything by negative 1. In other words, you're going to change all the signs. That's what happens when you divide everything by negative 1. So this becomes a positive, and this becomes a negative. Is that the same equation I started with? Why, yes, it is. So the graph of 1 over 5x minus x to the 19th must be symmetric about the origin. You can check that by graphing it and seeing if certain ordered pairs are on the graph, if their opposites are also on the graph. 
However, if you're going to graph this in your calculator, you will need to put the denominator here in parentheses. Otherwise, the calculator tends to get confused and think it's 1 5th times x instead of 1 over 5x. Last year, when we talked about the graphs of inverses, particularly the graph of an inverse of a parabola, we ended up with these sideways parabolas. Well, since a general quadratic equation was symmetric about the y-axis. If we flipped it on its side, it must be symmetric about the x-axis. That means if I were to fold a sheet of paper or crease it where the x-axis is, the one side of the graph would lie on top of the other. You're going to know if a graph is symmetric about the x-axis if an ordered pair that lies on the graph this ordered pair also lies on the graph. In other words, the x value will be the same, but the y will be opposite. So if 2, 4 were a point on the graph, it's symmetric about the x-axis if 2, negative 4 is also on the graph. Although we introduced symmetry over the y-axis, we didn't talk about how it works algebraically. The way that it works is if xy is a point on your graph, so must negative x, positive y. In other words, if 2, 4 were a point on your graph, if negative 2, 4 is also on your graph, it's symmetric over the y-axis. When we talked about inverse graphs in Algebra 2, we said that you could find the graph of an inverse by reflecting the graph over the line y equals x. The line y equals x is the one here in blue. If you have a function that is symmetric over the line y equals x, then if xy is on your graph, so must be yx. In other words, if you have an ordered pair that lies on your graph, so must be the point you get when you reverse x and y. So if 2, 4 is on the graph, so must be 4, 2. And then it'll be symmetric over the line y equals x. The last type of symmetry that we're going to talk about in this section is symmetry over the line y equals negative x. Negative x is just the, uh, it's, it's the same as y equals x, except instead of having a positive slope, it has a negative slope. And... Here's a rational function, something we probably talked about towards the end of Algebra 2. If a graph is symmetric over the line y equals negative x, then if xy is on the graph, so must be negative y, negative x. All that means is if 2, 4 is a point on a graph, so must be negative 4, negative 2. So you reverse the ordered pair and you change the signs. So let's do an example where we actually find these symmetries algebraically. Again, you can also find them graphically if you can solve the equation for y and graph it, but some of the equations are going to be a little more complex, and you may have trouble putting them into the calculator in order to graph them. So I want to find the symmetries of 6x squared is equal to y minus 1, and I'm going to check everything, and I have a very organized fashion for how I do it. I always start with the origin, and we said that symmetry over the origin occurred if you could determine that changing the signs of both x and y resulted in the exact same equation. So if I change the sign of x, and I change the sign of y, and notice I put them in parentheses, and then I simplify this, do I get the same equation I started with? Well, over here, negative x, when you square it, gives you positive x squared. So the left-hand side remain the same. On the right-hand side, though, I can't do anything to that negative y. I, I, I'm raising it to the first power, which means that it just stays the same. And therefore, it ends up not being the same equation I started with. After I check the origin, then I check the x-axis. And we said that a graph is symmetric over the x-axis if 
x stays the same, but you would look to see if the opposite of y was also on the graph. In other words, you're going to make y negative. So let's do this again. I'm not going to do anything to x, but I'm going to make y negative. Wait a second, this looks like the one when I did the origin, doesn't it? It's just 6x squared is equal to negative y minus 1, which did not work. All right, then I'm going to check symmetry over the y-axis. A graph is symmetric over the y-axis if you can change the sign of x, and it's the same equation. So I'm going to change the sign of x, but not do anything to y. And we just said that negative x when you square it is positive x squared, so I get 6x squared is equal to y minus 1. That is the same equation I started with, so it's symmetric over the y-axis. Next, we're going to check symmetry over the line y equals x. A graph is symmetric over the line y equals x if you can flip x and y and get the exact same equation back. If I can flip x and y, and I want you to notice when I flipped x and y, the square stayed on the left-hand side. It did not move with the x. So is 6y squared equal to x minus 1 the same as 6x squared equals y minus 1? No. And usually, if y equals x does not work, y equals negative x also will not work. So you can just say it's not it's not symmetric over the line y equals x. So the only symmetry that 6x squared equals y minus 1 has was symmetry over the y-axis. All right, let's do another one. Let's check the symmetries of x cubed plus y cubed equal 4. So I'm going to start with the origin. And the question is, if I make both of these the opposite sign, will I get the same equation I started with? Again, notice how when I plug in the opposite of x and the opposite of y, I put them in parentheses. When you cube a negative, do you get a positive or a negative? You get a negative. So when you cube this negative, you're also going to get a negative, and we do not get the same equation we started with. All right, let's check the x-axis. It's symmetric about the x-axis if I change the sign of y, and it's still the same equation. So I don't do anything to x, but I change the sign of y. Will that be the same equation? Well, since negative y cubed is negative y cubed, that is not the same equation. How about when I check the y-axis? And notice how when I write this every time, I write the definition first. The reason I write the definition first is so that I don't forget what I'm plugging in. So I'm going to make x negative, but I'm not going to do anything to y. Except when you raise a negative to an odd power, it stays negative. That is not the same equation you started with. Now let's try the line y equals x. So if I switch x and y, will it still be the same equation? So if I make the first one y and the second one x, is that the same equation? And the answer is yes. Remember that addition is something called commutative. That means that it doesn't matter if you do y cubed plus x cubed or x cubed plus y cubed, you get the same answer. So even though we reversed them, the signs are the same. And since the signs in front of x and y are the same, it really is the same equation. Now, this is a special circumstance. Remember I said in the last problem, usually if y equals x works, then y equals negative x works. But I, sh I probably shouldn't have said that because... This one, not only do you flip them, but you make them both the opposite sign. 
And what happens when I make these the opposite signs? They end up being negative because you're raising them to an odd power. And it turns out that that's not symmetric. So the only symmetry that this graph has is symmetry over the line y equals x. The last thing that we're going to talk about is something called even and odd functions. Functions are said to be even if they have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And functions are said to be odd if they have symmetry with respect to the origin. Even functions are one where when you plug in the opposite of x, it doesn't actually change the function. And odd functions are one where you plug in the opposite of x and it makes the original function the opposite. There is no rule that says all functions are either even or odd. They could be neither. Just because in a function has an even power does not make it even. And just because a function has an odd power does not make it odd. It must have this symmetry to hold true. So in this last example, here's a graph that goes through the ordered pairs 0, 0, 1, 2, 2.53, and 4, 2. I want to draw the graph so that it is even. Now we just said even means it's symmetric over the y-axis. So if this is the y-axis, we want to flip this graph over onto the other side. But where exactly are the ordered pairs going to go? Well, if it starts at 0, 0, if it's symmetric over the y-axis, it's going to stay at 0, 0. 1, 2 is going to become negative 1, 2. 2.53 is going to become negative 2.53. And 4, 2 is going to become negative 4, 2. And now I've got a nice even function. What if I wanted to make this an odd function. So now I'm going to take this out. I'll do it in a different color. What if I wanted to make this an odd function? Remember, odd functions are symmetric about the origin. So 0, 0 stays 0, 0. But 1, 2 becomes negative 1, negative 2. 2.53 becomes negative 2.5, negative 3. And 4, 2 becomes negative 4, negative 2. And this is what the graph would look like if we were to make it odd. And that is Section 3.1, Symmetry and Coordinate Graphs.